What's up, guys? My name's Tom Howard. I'm a lawyer over at the Collateral Base, and I specialize in cannabis law. And so I host this this channel, Cannabis Legalization News. And you could find us on Cannabis Legalization News uh, or my law blog, CannabisIndustryLawyer.com. Go over there, click one of the many Get Started buttons, and fill out the form that will lead uh, to our Monday.com board, and then we can get back in touch with you if you're interested in this type of cannabis license in the state of New Jersey. We're going to go over each aspect of it the new jersey law is pretty big so you might want to watch each one of these and then you may want to become a member of this channel because the entire webinar in its entirety is uh, available exclusively for members only uh, and so uh, let's get into the webinar right now uh, we start with the license that you're after whether it is a retail dispensary maybe you want to be a cannabis cultivator maybe you want to be a cannabis distributor or a wholesaler or a delivery driver we cover every single one of them and more on the new jersey cannabis license webinar enjoy then there's your cannabis processor and manufacturer license this is a class two. You can tune to pages 98 to 102 of the statute. Of course, the same sections 18 and 19 will still apply, uh, but this is particularly section 22. The most important things about this are gonna be the regulations regarding the doses and also the restrictions regarding the, the advertising. So as you can see here, these little uh, mint leaves or these little uh, cannabis, you know, you know, like chocolates, maybe they're you know green dyed white chocolate and regular chocolate. Uh, those might not go. You might not be able to get away with that type of shape in New Jersey. There's going to be a lot of um, prohibitions regarding uh, anything that is going to appeal to children. And, and I'm not saying, I mean, like, we're going to have to wait and see, can cookies get a dispensary in New Jersey? Or will those cookies be like, I'm sorry, they appeal to children. You're not allowed to call cannabis cookies. We'll see. All right. And so page 69, if you tune to that, you're going to have standardized dosing. That's 10 milligrams of a whole product and not more than 100 milligrams of THC for the total product. That's that's kind of industry standard. But then, of course, you have to budget for the equipment to be able to uh, dose appropriately. They say there's going to be some type of universal symbol for cannabis. Uh, California has one of those. It's just one of those uh, symbols that people can see. And they're like, oh, I know what that is. Uh, and then, of course, micro business, that's a thousand pounds of cannabis process per month. It's usable cannabis. If you want me to calculate that number, uh, get in touch with me later, because that number of a thousand pounds is going to come down to something in grams. And then from those grams, you can build out the rest of your uh, budgets for your ability to cash flow that license. Hey guys, that was a little taste of the webinar. If you want full access to all of our webinars, become a member of Cannabis Legalization News by going to your desktop and hitting join. Somewhere down there on that page, you can hit the join now button. I'm not sure if they have it on mobile yet. 50% of all revenue that we earn from the YouTube channel goes to commissary for cannabis prisoners. We want them to come out, but while they're there, we want them to have the best accommodations they can. So commissary is really important, especially when you have tamale day to deal with over at the mess hall. Now, back to the beginning of the webinar where I discuss the micro and conditional licenses. That's really going to be an interesting addition that New Jersey has and that it might apply to your team. I hope you enjoy it. If you want to get in touch with us, go to CannabisIndustryLawyer.com and click on one of the Get Started buttons. Thanks. Welcome, everybody. We're going to spend about an hour today talking about the new New Jersey laws. We're going to focus intently on you obtaining a license. And so if you're interested in becoming a license holder for New Jersey cannabis, this is the webinar for you. <laughs> So much so, and I'm going to be sharing my screen throughout. There's really just two things we're going to be going over in this webinar. There's the statute, and then there is my slides that kind of summarize the statute. We'll be digging into both. We'll talk about how much these applications will cost, uh, cost for getting started on this, uh, the, the density of the application, what goes into the application, the different types of licenses, and also there's different types of licenses and there's different styles of those types of licenses. New Jersey's uh, licensing scheme is quite complex relative to other states. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be exciting. It looks like it's going to be competitive. It doesn't look like it is. It's going to be competitive. It's in the statute. So you want a license in New Jersey. 
My name is Thomas Howard. Uh, if you want to find me, you can Google Cannabis Lawyer. You probably tried to Google some type of thing and you found my website, which is my law blog, CannabisIndustryLawyer.com, or you found me on YouTube. A lot of our subscribers came from YouTube, uh, and that is Cannabis Legalization News. If you haven't uh, subscribed to Cannabis Legalization News, you should, because on Sunday, Tommy Chong joins us, and uh, he has some amazing stories that you are going to want to hear. Uh, the most important thing is that this is not just on YouTube. It's also on all other podcast providers. That's where you can find it. If you like any of the stuff here, please subscribe uh, because we are going to know more in the future. Now, the key points that we're going to be covering today, micro businesses, they might not be as small as you think. How thick will this application be for you to get your license? It's going to be like a brick, but don't worry, it's a digital brick now. All the licenses and the documentation and the voluminous numbers of the pages, you probably will not have to hand those in via paper. They will probably be searchable PDF documents. Now, there's also the minority and the woman-owned, it should be minority, woman and disabled, veteran-owned to be specifically precise. I must. And then, of course, the conditional licenses for a more equitable industry. Now, that's exactly what you think about when you see old Nassau Ha here in, uh, in uh, Princeton, New Jersey. You think about equality. And so the fascinating stuff about New Jersey really has to do with the amount of um, locality that is built in and also the um, quotas that are built in for not only residents, but that disabled veterans, minorities, and women uh, and then also conditional licenses for more Main Street business owners to get into the industry and also jump lines. But the competitiveness is really, really interesting. So there's a lot that we don't know. And that, uh, that lot that we don't know will be changing, but probably not until August 21st. Uh, we know a lot from reading the statute, but we don't know a lot about the regulations forthcoming. So we will be examining the statute, uh, but we're going to have to wait for the rules, the public comment, and finally the application, which is formally called the adoption of the rules in New Jersey. Now, this will probably still raise questions. For example, Illinois did two rounds of questions and answers while taking applications. Not only that, they amended the law during the process. So the changes to the statute may happen while you're trying to get the license. Now, let's go over the cannabis licenses generally in New Jersey. There are going to be six classes and four types. The first type is the conditional license. 35% of these licenses are going to have to go to the conditional license type. That is going to be covered in more detail coming up, but that is the accessible model. And so 33% of the, I'm sorry, 35% of the licenses will be going to uh, Main Street people, people that make 200,000 or less individually and 400,000 or less if they're filing jointly plus other restrictions that we shall be covering. Then there is the micro business license, which has a definitional, one of the more important definitionals that we'll be covering. Now that's gonna be a floor, it's gonna be a range. It's gonna be at least 10% of every class up to 25% of the total. So it has to be 10% of each class, but 25% of the total, which is fascinating. So like some of the businesses are more likely to become micro businesses than others, I would say. That's, that's probably what's going to be shaping up. And then there's other uh, guidance in the statute that looks like will become uh, future rules in, in August uh, regarding the certified minority or women's or dis and disabled veterans businesses, 15% each. That's 15% minority and 15% women and disabled veterans business. Uh, and, and those will also allow for uh, greater equ uh, equity in the New Jersey flavor of legalization. Finally, you have just your regular licenses, and I have in quotes MSO, that is code in cannabis lingo for multi-state operator. For example, there are numerous multi-state operators currently operating in New Jersey as ATC, ATCs, at, uh, Alternative Treatment Center, yes, ATCs, vertically integrated large cannabis companies that came in, for example, uh, I'm going to single out Green Thumb Industries because I've reviewed their application. 
they promised $40 million. Now, uh, ATCs in medical, they had to be vertically integrated. They had to take all six classes that you can see to the right uh, and then do them themselves. Now we're allowed, and there's going to be regulations regarding uh, the vertical stacking of the licenses uh, to be able to pick and then choose which individual vertical of the um, uh, cannabis industry you would like to do. For example, class one licenses will be allowed to do cultivation. And then class two licenses will then do manufacturing. So that's like your vape pens, your edibles, your, your processing of the cannabis plant itself. Uh, class three will be wholesaler. Uh, this is going to be an interesting class and it has some severe tax ramifications, which we'll talk about later. Class four is the distributor. And the distributor, it, now, is that supposed to be 100% micro? We're going to go over the definition of what a micro business license is and show you an interesting, I believe it's an Oxford comma. Uh, I don't believe that they're actually going to be 100% micro, but I think most of the micros are going to be in your distributor, uh, your delivery, and then also your retailer. Uh, and so class five retail, you see that it's a dispensary. Unless you're in Michigan, for some reason, they called them provisioning centers just how it is in this industry. Class six delivery. Uh, and it really should be called like Uber Eats or uh, Grubhub style delivery, because like Uber Eats or Grubhub, uh, what happens is you as the, the driver for Uber Eats don't own the McDonald's. You just pick up the McDonald's and you take it to whomever ordered it. Uh, and, and that's how it's kind of setting up as the delivery uh, driver there. And that's why I think most of them will be micro because it'll probably just be a lot of independent, con well, sole proprietors, I guess, uh, and not necessarily independent contractors that are chauffeuring uh, cannabis from the retail location to a house. All right. The, the next stuff that we're going to be getting into are going to be these key definitionals. And this is when we're going to start now doing some switching between uh, the uh, slides and also the, the statute in and of itself. So we can review the terms because the statute itself will tell you what gonna, is going to go into the application and there's pages of it. So like it just doesn't.